Of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His grace and His blessing, now and ever into the age of all ages, Amen. As we heard the Holy Gospel, uh, which is the great feast of the Transfiguration, and as uh, I was um, thinking about this feast, what came to my mind is asking to make sure that everyone understands what is the purpose of this feast. This feast is one of the unique among the feasts that we have in the church. And usually when we celebrate the Feast of Resurrection, it is very obvious. I mean, the Feast of Nativity and the Feast of Theophany. The Feast of Transfiguration is a unique feast. So if I were to ask you, what is the main message of the Feast of the Transfiguration? You, of course, as children of this church, will be able to answer and respond to anyone to ask. And why is there a church for the feast of, 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 to commemorate this event? In every church, the patron saint of the church has a special relationship to each one in that church, and even in any Sunday school class or in anyone. So what is, the, what is the value or what is the focus? What is the message of the Feast of Transfiguration? Why did God uh, appoint for this to take place in the whole message of salvation. The feasts of the church each point to our salvation. But the Feast of Trans has many, many lessons, but there is one clear purpose why it came in this time. Maybe we give you other questions <laughs> to answer this question. The introduction of this gospel is in a very unique way in all three gospels. So we know the evangelist Mark Matthew and Luke. Today we read from St. Luke, tomorrow morning from St. Matthew, and then in the liturgy from St. Mark. The church collect all of them because of this feast so that we have the full vision. But they each present the feast in a different way or slightly different way in di different details so we can grasp the full understanding of the feast. So each of them present the timeline. And by the first few words, this timeline gives us perspective. So St. Luke says, after eight days. St. Matthew and St. Mark say, after six days. St. John Chrysostom says, why is it different? St. Cyril of Alexandria also gives the example. But you know why, correct? Right? The six days always represent the days of creation. The eighth day always represents the day of salvation or eternal life. That's why six is incomplete, seven is perfect, perfection, eight is eternal. So when they are ascending, it is in the time of imperfection. And while they're descending is the time of eternity. What is in the middle is the work of salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, and, and they are returning. So the work of the transfiguration is to for us to connect between the day of the cross on the sixth day in the sixth hour and the day of eternity in the eighth day. And in the transfiguration, we find both. That's why it's unique. It's not on the cross that they saw revelation of the prophets. They could have. And it could have been even in the day of the incarnation uh, when they depict in the incarnation many uh, of the fulfillment of prophecies you might find around different prophets pointing because they said and they spoke. But the Magi didn't see the prophets. The Magi saw angels saying glory to God in the highest. And they understood that they must also praise. So you have praise on heaven and you have praise on earth. The same in the day of the crucifixion, you have the Apostle, St. John, you have the Marys, and in the heaven, the heaven is also declaring the sun and the moon. That's why they, the Lord Jesus Christ said, if you quiet these children who say Hosanna, the earth, the rocks will cry out. So there is a declaration on heaven and earth. But in transfiguration, we have the apostles, St. John, St. Peter, St. James, and in with in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have Moses and Elijah. And they are pointing to the same reality, the same work. We have Moses who died 
many years before, and Elijah who is not yet, to point to us to the work that the Lord Jesus Christ is taking us from death to life. He is the one who will do this work. Now, why did the apostles, it said they were afraid and they didn't tell anyone, but they were supposed to understand this message. Why? Because in the time of the crucifixion would be the weakest time in their life. That's why all the apostles went and scattered, and even St. Peter denied the Lord. But, but this was given to them so that in the time of the cross they would not get weak, and they would understand that there is something after the cross. And in our life, we have the same, and even if we look at the lives of the saints, we have the same. Why is it the martyrs, before their martyrdom, the majority of them will have a vision of the Lord Jesus Christ, of St. Mary, or of an angel telling them that they are going to suffer and they will give their life and the Lord is waiting for them for the crowns? Or why is it when you have the martyrs of Shahid and you have the two, the father and the son, who are visiting the monastery and they see the crowns coming, and they're hiding because St. Moses told them whoever would like to hide, hide, escape. But whoever is willing to accept martyrdom, I will. So they said, we are visitors. We are not monks. And then when they saw the crowns, they said, what, why are we hiding? Their vision of the heaven for just a few seconds was able to change their life. And the same for the apostles. This is the message that when we're able to look into these heavenly things, it changed the earthly things. Uh, the, the, the martyrs, when they were facing, it gave them the courage, it gave them the, the attention and the resilience to endure whatever it, it... That's why in the Garden of Gethsemane, we are told that there's an angel that came to the Lord to strengthen him. Because to teach us that when we are weak, the Lord strengthen us in the time of uh, the difficulty. St. Luke emphasizes the agony of the, of the crucifixion in Gethsemane. And this is the work of the transfiguration. The transfiguration give us hope. They give us meaning when we are saying, why is there so much suffering? And in our life, God many times before the challenges come, before the difficulties, he will give a glimpse into what is the glory that is awaiting us. Some people even know when there is a trouble or difficulty coming ahead of time. God give a glimpse for what is the suffering. The suffering is not punishment. The suffering is glory. When you look in the Sinexar, as we read every day, and you find, okay, which is the saint today? What did they suffer for the name of Christ? And we love those saints according to what their struggle uh, was for the name of the Lord. And when it's a simple story, grew up a very good Christian, died a very good Christian, we say, okay, but we didn't, we said, well, where is the action? <laughs> where is the mystery of the transfiguration in their life? And the same for us. Again, not that God wants us and desire us to suffer, but he said, you will suffer for my name's sake. My children, my sons and daughters, they know what it means to become, be Christian. They knew in the time of their baptism that they were baptized in my name to die for my name's sake, and I will glorify them. That's why we say the praise that the martyrs will come bearing their sufferings. They will come caring, and we will see their suffering and we will glorify God for what they did. In, the, in this world, sometimes we have an aversion to any type of suffering. <laughs> Anything that may even sound difficult, we don't even want to hear. <laughs> Let's focus on the, on the good thing. But the Christians, that they were looking and they were searching for how can God's name be, be glorified. And that's uh, another reason why they look and they see the, the robe of the Lord Jesus Christ glistening. I mean, usually even in the icons, he wears white from the beginning because a picture for us 
of the divinity and he is clothed with the humanity. And always the humanity doesn't completely close the cloth, although he's perfect in humanity. But the divinity, because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But this is the time in which it was completely bright to give us the vision of what is to come, not what is now, but what is to come. And the same for us, if you want to see the most glorious picture of yourself, we will see in the kingdom that what he has for each of us. And part of what the Lord Jesus Christ said uh, through his apostle, that uh, in the book of Philippians, that whatever true, whatever is noble, whatever is just, how that we focus on the heavenly things so that our eyes can be also transfigured. So the picture of the heaven, if we saw heaven or the paradise or the saints for just a few minutes, just a few minutes, I don't know if we will be living the same. One time we were in one of the retreats and there was... Uh, after they prayed and they went to go, the children do their work, the assignments, one of the boys went into the church and he saw an angel. And he went out of the church screaming, <laughs> there's an angel, there's an angel, there's an angel. So all the children went, left their work, they came back and they were searching for the angel. They asked the boy, where's the angel? What did he look like? He started to describe for a few minutes, he's still shaking because of one angel. <laughs> I remember asking them in the heaven, how many angels? Thousands of thousands, 10,000 times 10,000 of, of one of those. And I don't think he saw Sherabim even or the Seraphim or the thrones. But cause us to think, if one of the angels <laughs> come to us for 10 seconds, <laughs> what is our reaction? But when we are offering the sacrifice, the whole church is full of the, what we, we don't see. And I'm sure if we saw it, we wouldn't be, we would be focused on the wrong things. So that's why God doesn't let us to see. But if we uh, have the perspective and meditating on the heavenly things, the earthly things seem small. When you come and go to any city and you go to the airport, you take a plane. The more that you ascend, you see where your city is or your, maybe you see where the airport is. And you see, this city is uh, Los Angeles. That little dot is Los Angeles. And after a while, you see, this little dot is California. Then if you were to continue, you'll say, this dot is Earth. <laughs> this is what the heaven give us perspective in life. So whatever troubling us, whatever bothering us, whatever distracting us, when we have the perspective of the heaven, it's just but um, like St. Paul says, fleeting, just but a moment. There were small things in life. Not that we don't take our responsibility serious, but that the challenges don't overwhelm us, don't confuse us, don't disappoint us. They are all, well, the heaven and earth will pass away, and all the desires, all the lusts, all the problems, all the sin will be washed away. But he who endures to the end, he who is continues with the vision, with the help of the transfiguration, they will see. Just as if you were to remind St. Peter, St. John, St. James in the day of the crucifixion, wasn't he, didn't he transfigure? He said, yeah, he transfigured. Why are you asking me now? He said, but didn't he say? That's why the message that came from the cloud said, this is my beloved son, hear him. Listen to what he was saying. What was he saying? He was talking to Moses and Elijah about the crucifixion. Why was he talking to Moses and Elijah about the crucifixion in the middle of the transfiguration? Like this is the one question they had. Like Moses said, I, I died, but you're, I'm human, but you're going to die. He explained to him. And Elijah said, but I didn't die. You are going to prepare for the second coming and you will also face death. And, but, but my death that I, will, that I chose and that I accepted so that I could suffer for my, and show them the greatness of love and perfect the redemption for salvation. Of, and they have been waiting for generations for this suffering and I have been waiting. During the conversation, 
The other part, they, they said, what, what's happening? <laughs> Do we focus on the conversation or focus on the revelation? But the two are joined together. The transfiguration explains for us the crucifixion and reveals to us the glory of the resurrection and the second coming. And my suffering, whatever it is, whatever my cross, that is, I know very well, or I will know very well, <laughs> it will, yes, be uh, in some way to weaken me, but more important, will lead to my glory. It will be the suffering that will lead to my crown. The thorn will be converted to gold and jewels, and it will be presented before the throne of the Lord, that we will say, Lord, this is what you allowed for us. We want to be glorified with you because you uh, perfected all in the earth and you uh, are our hope and our glory. Glory be to now and ever into the age of both ages. Amen.